Hello, my name is Kimberly Hawking and I'm the director and curator here at Greenlee Art Space. We'd like to welcome you to this very special event, an opening of our show, We Are All Related, an exhibition of Nesh Kanukut artists. Um, we're so excited to have you come and be part of this event with us. We think that this is a very important topic during this time of racial tension and injustice. Uh, we are here with you during this pandemic and we miss you and wish we could have some of our openings where you could all be with us. So let's all pretend that we're together and that we're enjoying our time. We hope that this uh, show brings you a sense of wonder and of beauty. All right, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what you're gonna see coming up in the video. First, we're gonna do a, sort of a fun thing where we're gonna show you our process as we set up the exhibition, how we go about placing the artwork where we do. This is a time-lapse process, so it looks like we're moving really fast, which is fun. Uh, after that, we're gonna have a video of a land acknowledgement and a blessing that was done by a Native American named Tina Calderon. And she came here to Greenlee to do that blessing, and so you're gonna get to witness that, which is a really beautiful experience. And thank you, Tina, for sharing that with us. After that, you're gonna see a series of interviews that, and a video that was produced by Sandra Wolf. And he interviewed the artists about their artwork, their art process, as well as uh, the curators of this ex exhibition. So we really think that you're gonna enjoy that as well. Uh, after that, uh, there's still more to come. So we're gonna do kind of a brief walkthrough of the exhibition and our idea with this is just to encourage you to want to come in and see the artwork in person. Um, finally, at the end, you're gonna see the community art project that many of you participated in. It's titled, We Are All Related and it has different collages that were made around this subject and it includes artwork from the community as well as the artwork that was created by some of the artists in the show. So we thank you Cat High for doing this and it's amazing we have artwork all the way from Brazil and New Zealand and the United Kingdom. So thank you so much all of you who participated in that project. So of course with any project like this there are many people that help to make it possible and many people to thank. So I'd like to do that quickly here. First of all I'd like to thank the board of Green the Art Space for all of your support. Without you guys, we couldn't uh, have events like this. Thank you so much to my husband, David, who helps to make my dreams possible and helps to hang all these shows. You're incredible and I appreciate you so much. Thank you to my son, Nathan, with all of his technical help and support for all of these online types of events. Uh, he really helped out with our workshop. I want to thank Cat High, uh, and Gail Werner. They've both been a very essential part of putting together the show, helping to curate, helping to put together the different artist talks and artist workshops. You guys are both wonderful and it's amazing to work with you. Uh, I'd also really like to thank um, all the artists for your beautiful artwork and the ways that you have expressed yourself on this topic and you have contributed to the beauty of this show. Thank you for your contributions during this time. Finally, I'd like to thank Sander uh, for his amazing interview skills and the ways that he was able to bring out so much uh, amazing information from the different artists. And we thank you, Sander, for the beautiful video production that you put together for Greenlee. So the interviews that you're going to see were done by Sander, and those were actually more lengthy interviews that were edited down into a shorter segment. So we will be posting those interviews in their entirety later on our YouTube channel. And we invite you to subscribe so you'll get a notification of when those videos are available. So you can hear more about each of the artists' work and their process. We also have a number of upcoming events, artist talks, and a storytelling time in closing that we hope that you'll attend and be a part of with us. They're gonna be really wonderful and you can learn more about those on our website. Finally, I'd like to thank the California Arts Council for their local impact grant, which has helped to make this art exhibition possible. I'd also like to thank the LA County Department of Arts and Culture for an operational grant, which has helped us to keep going during this very difficult time. 
And most of all, I would like to thank our private donors. We have many donors, donors who donate small amounts, donors who donate large amounts, and we are so very grateful for your support of our organization. We're a small volunteer run organization and we put our heart and soul into everything we do. So if you wanna to go to our website and become one of our supporters, we would certainly appreciate that. So make sure to subscribe. You can subscribe below if you enjoy what we're doing and you'll be able to hear about upcoming events. All right, well, that's it from me. I invite you to sit back, maybe get yourself a cup of coffee and some popcorn or some nice candy or cake. Um, cake is what I like. Anyways, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the show and we thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this really wonderful event and we are all related so thanks for coming together to enjoy this time with us. Hello, my relatives. Netwanya Nantina, Komitra Betnaha Tongwe, Koi Alaks Mechanican. 
My name is Tina Arduno Favadon. I'm Gabriela Otomba and Ventureño Chumash. And I want to thank Kimberly for asking me to start off this event in a good way, as well as my good friend Kat Hai for recommending me. I'm going to start with acknowledging the ancestors. Yararpomokre Hanuk Batam. We remember the ancestors. Eyohinkwim Hanuk Batam Wont Ekwa. That means our ancestors, they were here. And I'm going to do a prayer song. Um, I'll start with that and then I'll tell you what the words are in English. Maya Narakutya Vetwishme Nokre Tehosuna Tekupangaro Wishme Nokre expresses our love and thanks him for all of the blessing he bestows upon us day in and day out the air we breathe the water we drink the food we eat and at the end it says we count our blessings so I ask for blessings for each and every one of you and I want to thank you artists that bring a little joy to the world right now we're living in such difficult times and we look at this artwork and it can transport us away for a little while and enjoy the beauty that you saw as an idea and turned into a piece of art. So I thank you and I wish you a wonderful event from the Calderon family. I wish you to have, I wish you to have, I wish you to have, we thank you. I'm Kat High, and I am one of the founding members of Neshkanukit, which is a loose network of Native American artists, more or less in California. And it got started because we're, we're poorly represented in the art world generally. Um, there haven't been very many group shows of Native artists to really convey that sense of nativeness and connectedness. So Neshkanukit was founded and it means one who has relatives in the Luceno Ahashimam language. And in Lakota, it comes out, we are all related or Mitakwiasan. So we feel we are all connected. We had a grant from California Arts Council and had convenings in Northern California and Southern California. So it was a way of bringing us all together to share our story. We got together 2000. We had a, a show 
at the Haramakna American Indian Cultural Center, which was the first one in, in Southern California after a number of years and brought artists like Gail Werner in and, and brought artists like Nadia Little Warrior in. And we decided we would form this network. Quite often in, in the United States, you're supposed to deny your roots. You're supposed to cut them off and become American. Well, I can go back to one of my paintings that is of a baby in a cradle, Hafuz, and in back of her is a white buffalo. The buffalo had feminine eyes, and I thought, you know, a buffalo is one of my favorite animals, if not my favorite. It seemed to, after looking at the baby, the baby had very... Um, had elder eyes, and all of a sudden it hit me. This is what uh, the white buffalo is, is the recreation of um, the spirit, and it's, it looks over you. The white buffalo is going to tell you everything's going to be all right. And with the baby coming in with elder eyes, the baby already knew that um, he or she was protected. One is a warrior. And as I did him, he kept getting more ghostly looking. I say, well, that's my protector. And they say, oh, I can see it. He, this is powerful. That's wonderful. So I attribute it to my feelings at the time and how I've changed. Kimberly has done a wonderful job here. I've worked with... Um, a lot of these people before, and it's a, it's a wonderful community, I must say. When you get there, you're with the other people, and it's just all heaven then. I did grow up to be an actress, and I was on a national television show, and I was thinking, oh, I'd like to do something else, you know, I'd like to go down, I will go down and make a, a documentary or a film about Quanah Parker because I'd always loved the legend of this man. So down to, I went down to Lawton and I found uh, his descendants and introduced myself and got to know them. And because I was on national television on a very popular show at the time, they asked me to be uh, in their outdoor pageant about the story of Quanah Parker and his white mother, Cynthia Ann Parker, who had been taken as a child to raise in, uh, by the Comanches. And I did that for about four years, and then they took me into family. And that's a great tradition with the Comanches. And so on my naming day, big powwow, late at night, and in front of Star House, we were having this ceremony. And so we began to dance around. Now the lights were behind us shining our shadows up on Star House. And as we came around, I looked up and realized that there were more shadows than the people dancing. And I seemed to understand at that moment that there were, I'm standing on the shoulders of all of my ancestors. All of us are all connected. We are all this family of humanity in this dance as we go through our lives. And that's what that piece is about. There are people dancing around. There's a people of, uh, the picture of Quana. There's a picture of me dressed as Cynthia Ann and being blessed before we go and do this pageant. And there are the, uh, in clay, there are the, the dancers around. There's Star House. And there are all those shadows that were projected up on Star House. My work, which is in the realm of photography, um, has led me to explore things that I don't know about. So that um, when I was growing up in St. Louis, we were either, at that time, in the, 
when did I, when, in the 40s, you, one was either black or one was white. There was no other middle ground, no other ethnic population to affiliate with. When I came out to California, after hearing stories from my mother about Indians in the family, my cousins here started talking about words that seemed to connect with the Choctaw. And from that time forward, I started exploring that heritage and started going to powwows and wondering why there were people who looked like me at the powwows and why I was not able here to afford to connect with that heritage. So that was the genesis of my investigation of, quote, black Indians, unquote. Well, the cube that's on, um, on display today is an extensive um, celebration of that. I created two moccasins. One was celebrated the African aspect and the other one celebrated the Indian aspect with symbols of, of each ethnicity. And in my home, um, there is a celebration of that. So in my work, um, I, I tend to bring that out, but not exclusively. Um, I, sh I have a great interest in different cultures, many different cultures as well as the ancestry that, that I have. Um, and part of that has, has been an opening for me in finding connections with people in general and understanding of culture that springs from my dual heritage, if you want to call it that. Actually, my tri-heritage, because it's European as well. How does my work reflect my heritage? It, it addresses um, issues that are current in Indian country, social issues and political issues, and issues that face us as Native people. And um, I do that particular type of work because my ancestors fought for me to be here. Um, w one of the issues is the murdered and missing indigenous women and children. The other issue is the Dakota Access Pipeline and the fight for keeping uh, pipelines from going under our rivers. I address issues that deal with the boarding school, uh, homelessness, native rights, all, all different types of issues. I am a photographer and a bee work artist. And in my photography, first of all, I shoot with black and white film and I hand develop my own images. I'm always photographing. My friends joke and they call me a drive-by shooter because I see something and I'll jump out of the car and take a picture and I'm gone again. I think personally that I see things that other people might not see and I, wanna, I want you to see that. I want you to see what I'm seeing. And so I'm able to use my photography and I feel like a lot of times I'm able to give those that don't have a voice a voice. Work is I work in two different mediums. Um, number one, I work in um, clay, so I do a lot of hand building, uh, a lot of hand coiling, um, and I also work in pen and ink, um, pen and ink designs on paper. My clay work, um, my pottery work, is it is definitely tied into my culture. Um, I am half Pueblo of Isleta from New Mexico and half Navajo. Okay, we are Southwestern people. There are 19 different Pueblo people in the Southwest. And the Pueblo people of the Southwest, we have a very long, rich history in working with the different elements of Mother Earth. The motifs, the designs, the patterns that I use throughout my body of work, they're all representations of the natural world that you see out there in the Southwest. With clay, we normally think, when we work in clay, we normally think of um, clay representing 
three dimensional um, pieces or works of art. But with clay, I like to bring a two dimensional aspect to it. Um, so with my pen and ink designs, these are all hand drawn pieces. These are all, it's all freehand work. So when I approach my pen and ink designs on paper, when I approach my work, I don't use rulers or stencils or anything like that. I try to rely on just my, um, just my eye and just on my basic um, hand skills. And how I lay out the work too kind of gives it more, not quite a traditional feel, but also more, maybe a little bit more contemporary. My grandparents taught me that whatever we do with our hands, it comes through us. It's not from me. It comes through me from grandfather or Michelle. And it's very important what I'm thinking in my head and what I'm feeling in my heart will go into my work. So that's one of the things that's most important to me because I work with the Gord people who are beings from Creator and I get to put their regalia on them and then people come and take them into their homes. Um, so I want them to go with very good energy and I use that as rule number one from my grandparents' teachings. My grandmother used to come home and tell me, you have to cook dinner tonight because I'm mad at your grandfather and I don't want to make everybody sick. And you have to have happy thoughts. So I was raised that way, most importantly. <clears throat> and then I also use certain features in my work. When the Gord people show me they can wear that, like dream catchers and feathers and different images from, from my ancestors, from the Potawatomi. And also being Cherokee and Nez Perce with a little bit of Irish and a little bit more French. I add all of that up and you'll find all of that in my work. Uh, my, my work is completely affected by my heritage in every way. Um, my, uh, my family mixture of, uh, you know, the native culture plus the European, the reason I put fish in this is that the, the tribes are fishing tribes up there. My tribe is the Chinook tribe. And then my father left and um, became an architect and basically passed. Um, for white, and uh, so I grew up in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area and, and New York a little bit, and so I encounter a lot of museums and cultures. So my, my art is a mixture of the art from that area, the, um, the history and the magic that I was told as a child about that area, because my grandmother and my father knew people who were pre-contact, and there was still old Indian villages up there. Uh, this particular show, because it was about relatives, I thought should be about fish. I love to do it anyway. Well, I, um, I used to collaborate a lot with my father who passed away, but he was an elder and had, like I said, had memories of this stuff from when he was a little boy. So, so I, I used to create with him um, and talk about ideas and things like that, but I definitely let stuff stew for quite a long time. I don't have a formula that I use. Um, and I'm always exploring. And for me right now, it's all, the creative process is different for each piece, but right now what it is a lot about is exploring the, um, the return to some of that, um, you know, early knowledge that everybody's craving for right now, like that because our earth is on fire and our ice, everything's melting and we have crazy. And um, so, so I'm trying to kind of, the reason I'm doing fish a lot is that it for me, not only is it my family and my relatives, but it's also my subconscious. It's like deep. My work 
begins with the landscape, but I have a very specific place in mind. The three tribes that I'm from, the Cupeño, Luiseño, and Kumeyaay, have called the San Diego County Desert and Mountain Landscapes home for thousands of years. So when I'm working, I often think about that place. And I often visit our old village site, which is called Kupa, where my grandmother and the generations before her were born and raised. I also visit the Anza Borrego State Park, which is nearby and also home to several of the other tribes. The plant and animal life there never fails to inspire me. In fact, in our traditional songs called bird songs and our creation stories, the plants and animal life are the characters and they are the people. The images that I use in my work, such as plants, I do like to try to capture a sense that they're more than just a plant. I like there to be a sense of them coming into being or perhaps evolving. When I start a painting, I work very fluidly. I put down washes of color and let the drips all happen, and I'm hoping that those will kind of stay throughout the process, at least partially. Sometimes I might try a certain image, and if I don't really like it, it's not working, I'll paint it out, and then like to leave some of those traces there in the painting. Well, um, I guess the spark was I was looking at the different grants that were available through the California Arts Council, and I noticed one that was the Local Impact Grant, and it was talking about working with um, underserved populations, and um, I thought of Gail, and I knew that she had Native American heritage, and she had been uh, in some shows up at the Botanical Gardens and had talked about this group that she was involved with called Nesh Kanukat. And so I just thought this would be a really amazing opportunity to bring some artwork to this area that hasn't really been in this area before. And so um, Gail connected me with Cat High and we all got together and Cat had this book that she brought and we talked about how, you know, how do we want to go about um, bringing a show together that looks at this idea of how we're all related and how there's this connectedness between all of us. And I think it's something that's really important during this time. And even though it was conceptualized before these things happened, I think, you know, there's still this idea that I really want to get across through our gallery and through what we're doing, that sense of community, that sense of connectedness. And so really just found some, um, yeah, ways that those thoughts and ideas were coming together. So as we met together and talked about doing this show, we came up with some many different ideas, and I think um, that's really kind of how it started. Green the Art Space really started with this dream of having a space that would bring together community, um, creativity, and contemplation. I think that we are inspired through art and having a physical space. I'm very passionate about that. So being able to have a space that um, individuals can come to see beautiful work and be inspired by it, I think is really uh, important.